In the last video, we saw that for the function y equals e to the power of x, which I explain in great detail where this function comes from, its derivative is itself dy dx equals e to the power of x. Now let's suppose we have something more complicated. Let's suppose we have something like this. Suppose we have y equals 5 e to the power of x. Well, actually this is only slightly more complicated. If we're getting the derivative, we just have a constant times e to the power of x. So it's just 5 times the derivative of e to the power of x. I could write it like this, indicating that we just have to differentiate e to the x. We can leave that constant alone. Okay, so multiplying by a constant doesn't do anything. So we just have 5 times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the power of x. So that's straightforward. Now suppose we have y equals 5 times e to the power of 4x. Now what do we do in this situation? Well, we use the chain rule. All right, so what we do is we let u equal this here. So that means that we can write y as 5e to the power of u. So now we have y as a function of u. We can easily get differentiate y with respect to u, get dy du. That's just 5e to the power of u. Okay, if we differentiate e to the power of u with respect to u, we get it back, and the 5 is just a constant in front. So that's dy du. Of course, we want dy dx. So to get dy dx, we first have to get du dx. Differentiate our power with respect to x. Differentiate 4x with respect to x to give 4. So now at last we can get dy dx. dy dx is got from these two derivatives. It's dy du multiplied by du dx. The du's cancel. These two derivatives behave like fractions. This is not a rigorous uh, explanation by any means, but um, if we multiply these two derivatives, we get dy over dx, which is what we want dy du is 5 times e to the power u, du dx is 4. So this gives us 20 times e to the power u, and we can then put back in for u. What is u? u is 4x. We get 20 times e to the power of 4x. Um, you won't have to go through all this rigmarole in future. You just have to remember a few things. So I'm going to write this down again. If we have y equals 5e to the power of 4x, and we want to get its derivative, dy dx, what we do is we just copy down e to the power of whatever. In this case, it's e to the power of 4x. We just copy it down. Okay, so we just copy it down here. And then we multiply by the derivative of the power. We multiply by the derivative of this, which is 4. And then we can bring the 4 to the front, just to simplify it a bit, to get 20 e to the 4x. So that's all you do. You just copy down whatever um, the exponential function is, and multiply by the derivative of the power. Here's one more example. y equals 10 times e to the power of 6x squared plus sine x. So to get dy dx, we just take the 10, we just copy down this exponential function, e to the power of 6x squared plus sine x. Okay, so we just copy all this down, and we multiply by the derivative of the power. So we got, we've got to differentiate this power. If we differentiate 6x squared with respect to x, we get, tr we get um, sorry, we get 12x. Now if we differentiate sine of x, we get cos x. And we can multiply 12x plus cos x by 10 to get 120x plus 10 cos x, and this is all multiplied by e to the power of 6x squared plus sine x. If you go to Wolfram Alpha, you can just type in the word derivative followed by the function. That's e to the power of 6x squared plus sine x. Um, okay, I left out the 10. I'm just looking at this here. Just type that in, and you see, by the chain rule, we just copy this down, and we multiply it by the derivative of the power. So the derivative of 6x squared plus sine x is 12x plus cos x. If you want to see a graph, you can go to Wolfram Alpha, 
and type in, well in this case I'm going to do the graph of y equals e to the power of x. So here's the graph. Now, the derivative of e to the power of x is itself. So for example, if we take x equals 2 and go up to the graph, the value of the function at 2 is, is going to be e to the power of 2. But the derivative of the function at 2, or the slope of the tangent to the graph at 2, is also going to be e to the power of 2. So if we want to see what e to the power of 2 is, you can go to your calculator. On some calculators, it's exp. So if we press exp followed by 2, well actually in this calculator you have to put in 2 first and then press ex exp. I'm going to do it here instead. So you can figure it out on your own calculator. I'm going to calculate e to the power of 2. So it's about 7.38906. Okay, so the value of the function at x equals 2 is e squared, which is 7.38906. And also the slope of this line is 7.38906. So this distance here is, of course, 7.38906. But the slope of a line is got by dividing the vertical by the horizontal, so this distance here is 1. So that's always the situation. A tangent to the graph of y equals e to the power of x will have um, a horizontal distance here of 1. Okay, because we want to take 7.38906 and divide by 1. That's how we get the slope. divided by 1, which of course is just itself. So no matter where we have the tangent, suppose we have a tangent here, the tangent will cut the x-axis in such a way that the horizontal will be 1 and the vertical will just be the value of the function. So that means the slope will equal the value of the function at whatever um, point of contact we're dealing with, the x-value. Here's a better picture of what I'm trying to say. I got this graph from Wikipedia. So here's the graph of y equals e to the power of x again, with just different scalings. Suppose we want to get the value of the function at this value here. Well, it's just equal to this height here. But the slope of the tangent, that's the red line, is this height here, which is y, whatever, whatever it is, depends on this value of x. It's just y over 1 which is y. So the slope of the red line is equal to y over 1, which is y. And y is just the value of the function at this point. Similarly here, the value of the function at this point is this distance here, which we can call y. It's a different y from that y. But the slope of the tangent, that's this red line, is the vertical y over the horizontal 1. It's like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so the slope is the same as the value of the function at this point. Suppose that y is equal to 1 here, and that y is equal to 7 over here. So, multiplying the value of the function by 7, say we go from 1 to 7, means that we multiply the rate of change of the function by the same factor. So the rate of change dy dx is also 1. Here the slope of the tangent is just dy dx. And the slope of the tangent here is 7. So if we multiply the value of the function by a number, say we multiply it by 7, to go from 1 to 7, then we multiply the rate of change of the function by that same number.